today we want to focus in on dividends. Will they rebound better than expected in 2021? Paul, what do you reckon? Well, I think they probably can, Peter. Let's just have a quick recap on what happened in 2020 because yeah. it was COVID-19 and lockdowns. Bad year for dividends. And a really tough on, on, on dividends. And particularly for those companies that raised capital at discounted prices or received JobKeeper, yeah. they couldn't pay a dividend. They, no. they just couldn't do that. And of course, the other thing that boards had to consider was we didn't know how long the crisis was going to last for. So there was a general sense of conservatism. If you're director of a company, why pay out a dividend when you're in the middle of a crisis? You just don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. So, so if anything, companies heard it became very conservative. The other factor that drove it, Peter, of course, was APRA's control on financial institutions uh, limiting payouts to 50% of statutory net profits. Now, for the banks, the other hit, hit here was not just the 50% limit, but they all had a, were reporting big statutory write-offs because of other factors mm. and payouts for uh, earlier misdemeanors. So it meant statutory net profits were quite low and they were really hit bad. So let's go through to look at 2021. First of all, APRA's lifted its control, mm. um, so that's a real positive for the banks. There was a lot of cheering from bank dividend lovers. There were a lot of, bit, lot of cheering for bank and banks and insurers, and mm. so dividends for banks will, and insurers will be a lot higher in 2021. No control. Mm. They also will base it on underlying profit as opposed to statutory net profit. So that's which real, can be bigger. Which can be bigger. Which that's a real positive. Mm. Secondly, we know that some of the sectors of the market and parts of the economy are really going gangbusters. Yeah. The resource companies, the iron ore majors are doing fantastically, but so a lot of the retailers, yeah. JB Hi-Fi, yeah. West Farmers, Super Retail Group. And those profits you know, have to be great for dividends. Yeah, people are spending out there yeah. and they're gonna pay big dividends. So mm. that's gonna be a really um, big support. And thirdly, you know, the whole conservatism that boards were facing last year, look, they're gonna be, they're always gonna be a bit conservative, but they won't have the same sort of pressure. And they know, that a lot of shareholders did it really tough mm. in 2021. So they'll be out to help uh, in 2021. So dividends, I think the outlook for dividends is a lot, lot better uh, this year. But a couple of things to be mindful of. First of all, share prices are a lot higher. So the nominal yields are gonna be lower. So, so the percentage <laughs> dividend could be smaller than people expect, but the dollar amount could be bigger. Yeah, so whereas in, just to put that all in context, whereas in sort of 2019, as a, as a yield, that's sort of based on a, you know opening uh, share price values, dividends averaged around about four and a quarter percent. Last year, we went back to about 3%. I think we're up to about three and a half percent in 2021. With the risk, Peter, mm. the positive risk, they're likely to be higher, more than lower. Yeah. And you year. do tend to err on the conservative side, Paul, when it comes to these sort of things. Let's go and look at some companies that you really like that you think will be good dividend payers this year. Yeah, here are three stocks to think about uh, to, for the in income portfolio. The first one is the Charter Hall Long Whale REIT. Now, what that means is it's a retail investment trust, mm. but it buys assets where there's very typically very long rental agreements. Things like uh, with big quality uh, tenants. Yeah, things yeah. like telephone exchanges. They don't change hands, right? I mean, Telstra is going to be and an MBN have these telephone exchanges. They're going to have for decades, right? Yeah. So they can they lock in you know very long term rental agreements, uh, and so that's the type of asset convenient stores or some uh, part of it has a portfolio of assets that meet that sort of mix look it's uh, paying six and a half percent or forecast to pay six and a half percent that's unfranked but around four dollars fifty you can see from that chart the company's been pretty stable mm. high quality tenants high, long uh, rental agreements not a lot of turnover I think you can bank in your six and a half percent and at four dollars and fifty look this stock got there's a bit of a flight to safety yeah. stocks in part of 2020 as uh, as the market came under pressure but I think it's come back a little bit and now looks pretty attractive again okay let's go to your second one now look the second one is a company that I've been a bit of a fan of uh, mainly because uh, not a particularly fashionable industry in health insurance mm. because there are obviously a lot of uh, you know, headwinds but mainly and competitors because, as well and competitors but in an industry where there are 30 players Medibank Prime is the biggest and has actually been gaining market share, Peter. Important. That's pretty hard when you're number one in a market. Mm. That means the company is doing something right, it's notwithstanding all the other challenges. They've had uh, some good news around premiums, they've been able to increase their premium this year. Uh, the stocks rebound a little bit. It's shown a lot of resilience around about that 275 to $3 level. Whenever it gets much above, I think it gets a bit expensive, but you know, at uh, around about $2.90, it's yielding about 4%. That's fully franked. You can lock that in, Peter, and I don't think there's too much downside yeah. in, in Medibank prices. And it's interesting, Paul, in a, a, an economy where people are spending a lot because they can't go overseas and there's a lot of money sloshing around from government, 
it's, it's probably more likely that people are prepared to pay for private health insurance than if they are really feeling as though they are unemployed in a really depressed economy. Yeah, they've had a look. They've had a few wins. COVID nineteen has actually been a bit of win for them because mm. a lot of the elective surgery has been put off. There's been some risk there's going to be big catch up in claims, but it really hasn't come through. Uh, I think the, this company is well run. Mm. Uh, I don't really like always go for you know an industry where there's tailwinds, but the market sort of I think is factoring too much, and uh, yeah. I think Medibank Private is a, is a pretty safe bet. The third one is high risk, Peter. Mm. This is a rise, and this is the old Queensland National Rail. So it's a logistics and rail company. It both transports. Uh, uh, you know, coal and other raw, raw materials. Also owns a lot of the underlying track mm. uh, in Queensland, bit in WA, bit in New South Wales. It's been hit a little bit by some of the concerns around China uh, and the impact on thermal coal. Now, really, most of what arises in transports is actually metallurgical coal. You need that for, for steel making. Yeah. Pretty hard to replace that. Uh, that's why the price has come down a bit. Attractive yield, 6.8% fully franked, you know, a bit of, bit of upside to, you know, maybe the commodities market can mm. be better than expected. Maybe the, the China thing's not as bad. I think uh, at that sort of uh, income return, uh, there's a fair degree of safety in that. Okay, Paul, if someone is putting together a portfolio for dividends in particular, how many would you have in your portfolio? Yeah, look, that's a really good question, Peter, and I'm always uh, a little bit more on the, the bigger side, so around about 20 stocks. Less than 10, I think, is insufficient diversification. Above 30, you just can't trick character them. Mm. You really have to go across the sectors. So don't just have all banks or insurers or Telstra in there. You need to get some diversification across the sectors. And you probably even need to pick some stocks in some of the really low yielding sectors like healthcare and IT, mm. simply because you know, if the, that's where the market growth has been and you yeah. don't want to miss out on all the growth. You want the income but you also want to make sure you're keeping pace with the market as well as much as you can. Yeah, and I guess at the moment CSL is, is, is looks like it's in the buying zone. It's been sold off recently, and that could be a classic example of a health stock that has a lot of capital growth ahead of it.